Welcome back. The fall harvest is in full swing. Mountains of squash, broccoli, and everything in between is at the market. It can be tough to tell what's best, and you also might want to try something new. Our Steve Paulson is live outside with produce expert Bob Borzone. I'm so glad he's back, Steve. I think a lot of people are glad he's back because yeah. they get free pumpkins. Well, that, too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Bob, Bob uh, good to see you. Where, uh, who are you with now, Bob? What organization? Company? Borlato. We formed a company that does produce marketing and consulting. We're off to a great start on the rainy season, but these are all from the drought. How did the, imp how did the drought impact the uh, gourd squash? This has probably been the weakest year as far as the size of the crop because pumpkins take a ton of water. They take about two inches a week during the growing period. And uh, this year with the drought, there's a lot of farmers who actually did not plant as many pumpkin seeds as they had in the past. And you'll see less in, the, especially in the gourd category, there's a lot less. You're saying there's really just a, a couple of big farms now that do this? And, yeah. and Van Groningen, who was nice enough to provide us with all of this product today, along with Christina Larkin from Taylor Farms, uh, they are the largest now. They're out in Manteca. Matter of fact, uh, you can actually go out there, see all of this stuff, buy the product there. They do a great job. Now let's talk about those that are maybe for decorative purposes and those that are for eating purposes. What is this? This is new to the show. This is called a gizmo uh, gourd and first year that we've seen it on the market. They actually can grow up to about a pound and a half. Uh, pretty unusual, very ghoulish and perfect for the Halloween season, right? Now about eating. We, let's start down at the end. This is one of our favorites, I believe, right? This is a fairy tale. Okay, fairy tale pumpkin uh, has really become popular. It'll grow to about 20, 25 pounds, and it's terrific for soups and purees. The um, uh, Cinderella pumpkin, which we'll go, get to in a second, we can actually do that. Come on down just, here, come on down. Uh, so the Cinderella pumpkin, if you're going to bake a pie, the Cinderella pumpkin is going to be your best bet because the flesh is, is sweet and tender and very easy to get to. Where some of the pumpkins are with hard rinds are difficult to cut into or whatever. But for ornamentation also, the Cinderella and the fairy tale are so large that they're perfect for your Thanksgiving tables. We have some here that maybe aren't the best looking, yet you're telling me they're pretty good. Let's talk about this one right That's here. Popcorn the pumpkin. Popcorn. That was genetically bred to look like popcorn. Edible? Uh, it's edible, a little tough to cut through. Uh, as compared to the peanut pumpkin that we have here, JC, which is the, the, the peanuts which form on that pumpkin. What do they tell you? Well, they tell you how sweet it is. The more peanuts, the better the sugar content. So if you're going to bake a pumpkin pie, for example, that would be a perfect pumpkin to try to utilize for that purpose. Okay, and you have one here that uh, you tell me this one's right here. What's this one, the gray this one? It's called a, a treeamble pumpkin. This, this is, is big on the East Coast. They grow a lot of these in the I Illinois region east, and as a result, this is huge on the East Coast. Edible? It, it, totally edible. It's kind of tough to get your product out of there because it's so twisted up. Uh, but yeah, you can you can do it. If, if you really want to use a pumpkin for the purpose of eating, you're going to use your fairy tale, your Cinderella, your peanut. Okay. Uh, some of the warty pumpkins are good looking, like the warty red there at the end. We'll come on down uh, here. Okay. They, they get big and they're they're nice looking as far as a Halloween pumpkin goes, but uh, tough tough to get into and eat. Now you were telling us, uh, me and, and our own Pam Cook is right over there, and we didn't even know it. If you want to save, because we've had some rain, if yeah. you put pumpkins out, how can you save them? Maybe give them a little longer sh life. Well, the 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 wetter a pumpkin gets after it's off the vine, it's going to rot. Okay. Okay. So if you were to uh, coat it with a vegetable oil and put it in a dark, cool spot, it'll last six to nine months at least. It probably is going to take you all the way to the next Halloween season. That long? I don't yeah. think I want it that long. No, but... Probably not. But some of these big pumpkins, which are gorgeous and uh, pretty to look at, they'll, they'll last. Anything new here that we didn't have, no, say, in years have, past? On some of the, uh, this, this is called a winter lace pumpkin. Kind of looks like a cantaloupe a yes, little bit. Does. And they tell me that I haven't tried this, but they say the flavor profile in these is really good also. Uh, we also have this year acorn squash, which is always the a ubiquitous. Item. This is a new variety of acorn, which is a uh, white acorn squash. And same flavor profile, exactly. Not sweeter and just same, just looks different same, on the just outside. Just looks different, a little bit better ornamentation. Of course, you have your kabucha, which is... Uh, uh, yes, we know uh, the kabucha is... Uh, aphrodisiac. That, yeah, aphrodisiac. that and oysters in your set. Okay. We have a turban squash, which... This is, is decorative, though, right? Th this is really decorative because it is so difficult to cut through this that uh, you're going to get hurt. So you're better off just leaving this for ornamentation purposes and, and moving on. What about as far as the rain season starting off now with this historic rain in October? These have all been already picked, so it doesn't matter now, right? Everything was harvested mid-September. Uh, 
if this rainy season keeps up, which you and I hope it does, yes, we do. next year should be a bumper crop. Because, because they, do the do pumpkins take more water than, say, almost anything else, or is it what's a, in the same category? The first two weeks, they take a half inch per week. Then for about the next three weeks, an inch. And then for their growing period, the pumpkin uh, manifests itself in 100 to 120 days, typically, depending on the variety. And during that last period, they take at least two to three inches a week. So uh, they need water. Without the water, they're, they're not going to manifest themselves. They're not going to grow to the size they need to be. Now, you were out there at the uh, We're going to wrap it up right there. But, Bob, uh, what would be your one pick to say to eat or bake? What's I the would, one? I would say go with the Cinderella. Cinderella. There we go. All right. That's it. Bob Borzone here helping us out again. Good to see you after two years, Bob. Yep. No kidding, Steve. Okay. Gracia, back to you and if, Frank. If Pam doesn't want the Cinderella, I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen. I, I learned... think Pam has her. Pam put her name on the Cinderella already. Yeah. Then She's she, waiting. She, she can have it. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen.